yeah hi everyone uh, so today i'm going to give my knowledge on users and groups in linux and that's actually a very common thing that we come across and and have very little to no idea or maybe very little idea but today i am going to dig dig deeper into these and how they play one of the important roles so yeah uh, but before we start the session uh, okay i'll do it in a slide show mode yeah mm, let's look at some of the knowledge etiquettes and be punctual uh, while joining the session be sure to leave feedback because it helps the speakers to improve themselves and keep your phones in silent and please avoid any kind of disturbances while the session is going on okay yeah the agenda for today will be uh, i'll discuss what users are how we can create and delete them how we can modify these user details and the user account expiry i'll the terms i am using i'll explain them better uh, while i go ahead with the presentation uh, i'll discuss what groups are and system wide environment and sudo command and managing these user and group permissions using sudo ors file yeah uh, one thing i would like to say that uh, my the session will be kind of different i'll go through a slide and i'll go through the demo side by side because it's the theory is really less it's mainly command centric so i'll uh, execute the commands and show you the hands on rather than uh, going over the slide and uh, demo so but at first let's look at what users are uh, let's go through the slide a uh, user is an entity in linux os that can manipulate files and perform several other operations each user is assigned an id that is unique for each user in the operating system and etc password directory i'll tell you what this file is and creating and then we'll look into creating and deleting users and then uh, assigning a home directory to it and the user id group id and setting a password to it so i'll uh, go into my terminal so lxc exec okay so uh, i'll uh, describe my uh, uh, setup a little so i'm using uh, lxc containers uh, instead of any vms and i am not uh, running these commands on my local because i'll be creating many users and groups and i do not want my system to be crowded with uh, useless things because uh, uh, at the end i'll have to delete them so yeah this is kind of a vm and at first uh, let's see uh, what user i am while running the command so if i run the command who am i it will show me the current user i am using to run the command and there is a file called cat uh, etc password right and this actually shows all the users details all the list of all the users that are present in the system and some other details and these details are basically this x is basically the password that is in a encrypted form and it is uh, redacted uh this is the user id this is the group id of the primary group this is some comment and this is the path of the home directory and this is the default shell right so these are some of the details uh let's go on and create an user so that way the things will be clearer so for that the command is user add right user add and the name of the user it's basically that simple let's give it the name demo1 and i'll add a hyphen m flag basically hyphen m says that create a home directory for it right if i do that and if i check the list of the users and that is using cat etc password right and let's grep demo 1 i'll see that demo 1 has been created with a home directory path with our shell and a user id and the primary group id right so if i go into this directory right if i go into this directory i'll basically be in the home directory of the user demo one right so i created the user and it has a default shell of bin message so let's uh, switch into the user the command for, for that will be su and the username if i do that so now if i type who am i it will it will show me demo one 
because I have switched to the user demo one. And if I uh, do a PWD, the print working directory, it's showing me home demo one because I'm in the I'm in the user demo one and it's the home directory of it. If I do a CD2, it will always land me there because it's basically the home directory, right? So <clears throat> let's suppose uh, I want I don't want the home directory to be under home, maybe some other directory, and I don't want the default shell to be SH, right? We can do that too while creating an user. So let's create an user demo too. Uh, we say that yeah, we need to create a home directory, and let's say I want to change the default shell, right? For that, the flag is bin uh, hyphen s, and I'll say let's build bin bash, and change the default. Uh, and I want the home directory to be created elsewhere, right? So I pass a hyphen d flag and say let's create it under under opt and demo2 right and i close the quotes right and if i again do cat etc password the same old thing and grip demo2 i'll see that demo2 is created but this time things have changed the default home directory is op opt demo2 and it's the shell is been bash if i switch to demo2 and i do a cd it will actually take me to the home directory and if i do a pw be there so its home directory is opt demo2 and there is a variable uh, shell in capital that actually shows me the current shell and if i do that it shows me bin bash so basically i i have created an user with a custom home directory and a custom uh, shell okay and apart from that uh, two more things i want to touch one thing is uh, the unique id so basically the name the names are okay right but still you need some uh, identification or id that should all uh, that should be unique right and this unique id is basically what gives uh, what linux provide uh, assigns to each of the user and which makes them unique so this unique id is uh, generated randomly and it starts from 1000 th uh, and the next free unique id is assigned but we can also create an user with a uh, custom uid and for that we can <clears throat> pass the hyphen u flag right so i'm not going to do that because that is uh, kind of simple you can just add on to it and these are all very basics and your yeah, system user account is uh, one of the thing uh, we said these are users right these are normal users but and these will be used by some entity some people right but let's say we have a demand service we have a service like let's say mongodb elastic search right and they need uh, some authorization some access to certain files so how are they going to do that as i said at the first in linux uh, the user basically provides you an identity uh, a way so that it can have access over some files and anything so then also need to have an user right the mongodb say mongodb or postgres any of the services that need access to certain files so how are they going to do that? The user, this uh, normal users, right? If they use that, this also provides you the uh, <coughs> login shell, the home directory, but they do not need that, right? They only need uh, the users to um, manipulate the files and nothing else. So in that case, uh, system user accounts come into picture, right? So these uh, users, what basically are, they do not have a login shell and when you create them they are mainly created for these daemon services if i do a cat etc password right it, many will many of them will have no login right because it does not have a uh, login shell the non-existent means it does not have any home directory and this is basically a system uh, account right because these are used by any of the daemon services and the unique id of them are always less than thousand Okay, I hope uh, it's clear to you. If anyone have question up till this, you can go ahead and ask and I'll still I'll jump on to the next session, next slide. Uh, so uh, modifying user details and expiry, right? Mm, let's say we have a user created, right? We have created a user. Uh, as I created the demo one user, right? The demo, uh, let's cat it again, etc password and let's create demo one so it has a home directory of home demo one and it has a default shell of bin sh right but 
somehow the user does not the user does not like to use the bin sh shell uh, he or she wants to use the bash shell right so how can we do that the user has been created right for that we can change that to for that there is a command called user mod uh, so basically it will change the default shell so user mod hyphen s and i'll pass the shell that i want that i want to use bin bash and the name of the user and it's demo one but before i execute the command before i execute the command i did not execute it i just commented it i'll show you the default shell of demo one in case you have missed so here i am in the user demo one and if i do a echo dollar shell it will show me the current shell right now i'll go ahead and execute the command and uh, yeah okay sorry i missed the quotes yeah now if i do demo one again uh, not a directory okay sorry sorry this this slash will not be there yeah let's uh, switch into demo one and now i see that it's all colorful and i do the who am i it's demo one and eco dollar shell and it's been bash so uh, so we can change the default shell and not only this uh, uh, let's change the default home directory of demo one right uh, so as we know cat etc password grep demo one we see that the default home directory is home demo one uh, i want to change it to maybe something slash opt or maybe let's grab the demo two. it's under under opt demo two, right i want to move it to home demo two. We can do that too. For that, the same command user mod because it's for modification of the user. And I say that hyphen hyphen home, the address of the new, the path of the new home, uh, say home demo two, and the name of the user. The name of the user is demo two, right? And now if I again do the cat etc password, this is basically the foundation for checking any of the user related uh, information. I see that it has been changed to home demo two, and again to ve verify, let's switch to demo two, and yeah, uh, eco, who am I? Eco dollar shell, yeah, bin bash. Okay. One thing I'd like to tell you, uh, let's switch to demo one again, and this is basically the home directory of uh, demo one, right? The command for that is eco dollar home. And if I do an ls a, I'll see dot bash history, dot bash logout, dot bash rc, dot profile. These are the files. So you may be wondering, from where are these files coming? When the home directory is created, how are these uh, files getting populated, right? So basically, Linux has a directory called scale in uh, inside etc, right? And if you do, uh, I do a cd and let's do an ls hyphen la and see what are the contents are. They're actually the same content that these have, right? So every time the every time uh, Linux creates an user, so it basically copies this content to the home directory, right? These are basically the defaults. Then the user related changes come that the user makes. But when an user is created, these are copied by default. So this is one of the important directories. So if we want any changes to be made at all user level and before creating them, we can maybe create a file there like let's say vi note and a note for all of the users that will be created. I can just create a file and save those changes. And every time we create an user, these will be present in the Define you're not audible. Dips, uh, are you still here, Define?
Hello. Yeah, define we can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, my internet had an issue. I okay. I don't know from where I was lost. So, uh, did I cover the slash etc scale or did it cut off? Yeah, you were talking about uh, note file, vi note. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, basically, let's say that um, uh, we have we want to create many users, right? And we want this, uh, we want some of the files or some files to be replicated to all of the users so that all users have an immediate access to these files, right? For that, we create, um, we can create any of the files in this directory, and when we create the user, the, it will be replicated. Okay. So this is done and actually let's talk about one more important thing that is user account expiry, right? You as a system administrator will should never allow any user to have uh, unlimited access to your system, right? Uh, let's suppose uh, I have already created demo one and demo two. Let's create another uh, user with a newfound knowledge. Let's give it demo two and let's set the uh, shell to bin bash. Okay, sorry, it will be demo three. Yeah, so cat etc password grip demo three. Okay. Yeah, so demo three is created, right? And one more thing I missed uh, to set a password for any of the user initially, we use the password command and let's set a password for all of the users we created. Uh, the panel screen is stuck. My screen is stuck. Okay. Yes. What's visible? Yeah. yeah, it's visible. Maybe for you only. Okay. 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 So uh, let's set password for all other users. Uh, demo two. We are setting our password to demo two, and demo demo. Okay. We have three user setup, right? And the command line tool to view this user account expiry is actually C H A G E. This is the command, right? And the syntax is really simple. We give an hyphen L and name of the user. Let's say demo one, right? And it shows us all the uh, information regarding it. The last password change was Jan 6, which is today, because now only I set the password. The password never expires. The password is never inactive. The account never expires. And the minimum number of days between password change is zero and all other information. I'll go into them in details when I set them, right? So let's uh, set an account expiry for it right let's say that the account expired on jan 2nd right let's do that uh, for uh, user demo one but at first let's switch to demo one and from demo one let's try to log into demo two right if i give the password yeah i am in i am basically in the user demo two right so um, i'll open another terminal uh, and let's log into demo one, right? So let's set a uh, uh, account expiry for user demo two. The uh, <clears throat> syntax is uh, really simple. We give hyphen capital E and set the date when the account is supposed to expire, right? Let's give it 2023 and give it first Jan. So it basically passed, right? And I do demo two. And again, to check if it has uh, changed, the same command demo two, and I see that the account expired on January Jan first, right? And at first I saw I uh, you saw that we can log into demo two. Let's try to log into the user demo two again. Is you demo two, and it will ask me for the password because only af after Linux verified that the user is authenticated, then it will show you any information regarding expiry or any other information to that user. But at first it will authenticate. So let's give the password and it will show me your account has expired. Please contact your system admin. Yeah, so in this way, we can set an expiry to an account. Uh, let's disable it. But for disabling, we can give a flag to hyphen one. Okay, and let's set a password expiry date, right? Let's say that uh, after the after 10 days of password change, the password will expire. Let's give it 10 and let's say demo two, right? And uh, if I do hyphen L for demo two, it will say that the last password change is Jan 6 and the password will expire in Jan 16, right? If I try to log into demo two now, 
it will ask me the password and it will let me in but let's uh, for the sake of the demo let's change this date to way back uh, let's uh, say hyphen <clears throat> d and the last password change date let's set it to maybe 2022 one and one so it's nearly one year back for the demo too right and if i do an hyphen l it is showing me that password was uh, became expired on jan 11th right that nearly one year ago so now if i try to log into demo 2 it will ask the password obviously and then it will show me you are required to change your password immediately and it will ask me to change the password i'm not going to change that for now that is simple so let's reset this again uh, let's say that hyphen m is minus one and for the demo two so uh, uh, minus one is basically it will reset this information right now the password expires never now <clears throat> this is the number of days of warning before uh, password expires it will basically show you uh, uh, that the pass your password is going to expire please change it but one of the important thing that i wanted to show you is that password inactive right let's suppose your password has expired and uh, there is a is an inactivity period let's say it's 30 days right after password expired if you try to log in it will show you to change the password right but if within 30 days you did not try to change your password or try to log in so that we can safely assume that the user has been inactive right so in that case we can log that account i'll show you that <clears throat> also uh, Dibayan, sorry to uh, interrupt you uh, yeah. can anyone you know uh, confirm me that they are able to see the parents screen Yes. Yeah, yes. I can see. Visible, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dipan. Please continue. Okay. Yeah. I'll set the uh, password expiry date again. Uh, okay. I think I did something. Okay. So I and this. Uh, sorry, the flag was actually wrong. It is the last password change, and the. Let's say that password expired 10 days after the password was changed. So it expired on Jan 11, right? And let's set uh, inactivity days, number of days the account should be inactive after which the account should be locked, right? Let's set it to maybe 20 days, right? And let's give the name of the user. And if I do an hyphen L, so it says that the password became inactive on Jan 31. Now, if I do uh, try to log into demo 2, it will first ask me the password as usual. And then it will say me that your account has expired. Please contact your system admin. So basically this means that the account has been locked. So you'll have to talk to the system admin and to unlock the account. It's really simple. You just do one hyphen one. And now if I try to do it, it will only ask me for the password because the password has actually expired. So you'll have to change the password. Now, what are the benefits of this, right? You as a system admin do not want all of your users to have access to every one of the things, right? You need to, you want to access the, uh, restrict the access and you need to have, let's say, uh, uh, in your, uh, you hire someone on a contract, right? And that's a three months contact contract. So it's not your duty. Let's say it's hundred people, right? then if you do not set an account expiry after three months you will have to delete those users or lock those users manually but while creating these users if you uh, set these set these informations right what happens that uh, <clears throat> after three months uh, you do not have to do that manually those users will be locked automatically and that will be an advantage and that will be really helpful because all we're trying to do is automate everything and it will be automated okay so <clears throat> this is done let's go back to the slide yes modifying user details and expiry you have covered okay let's uh, look into groups we'll go through the slide and then we'll again jump to the demo so what are groups so basically user groups play an important role on linux system they provide an easy way for select groups of user to share files with each other they also follow allows his admins to more effectively manage user privilege since they can assign privilege to groups rather than individual users so in simple language uh, let's say we have a group of users who should have only this permission right only to maybe edit these files but not remove or delete it right for that we actually add them to a group 
and we give the permissions to the group rather than giving the indiv um, users individually. In that case, if a new user comes, we can add them to the group. The generic definition of a group. So we will create and delete group, add and remove user to the group. And one of the important concept I want to go through is primary and secondary group. Right, I'll again jump into the slideshow mode. Yeah, I hope now it is more clearly visible. Primary and secondary groups. So basically every time an user is created, right? Um, it is assigned a group. A default group is assigned to it. A group is created with the same name as the user. Now, what is the purpose of the primary group, right? Maybe for some users, we need only the user level, uh, user level, <clears throat> uh the permissions and privileges right but every linux says that every user should belong to a group so for that they br uh, brought the um, concept of primary and secondary group so every time a user uh, makes a changes makes any changes uh, the history of that change will show that this user has made the changes and that belong and belongs to a group so this is the uh, flow so that's why every user should belong to a primary group and secondary groups. Let's say that there is an user who needs some excess uh, extra permissions, right? For that, the secondary groups come in. Let's say we have a group A and that has some permissions and we have a user B who do not have those permissions, right? We can add the user to this group and make this group the secondary group, right? So that it, he can have all the permissions that, uh, that belong to the group. It may sound confusing, but uh, I'll jump into the demo and I'll uh, tell you what these actually are. So groups, we can change primary and secondary groups. We can create user with a specific primary and secondary group, change group name and delete user from groups. So, okay, yeah, let's uh, create a group. And yeah, to check what are the groups, uh, cat etc group, and it will show me the list of the groups to create a group the command is really simple group add and name of the group let's say demo group right and if i do a cat etc group it will show me the newly created group right and as you remember i created three users demo one demo two demo three and they have their groups created as well with the same name okay so we created a group but we need to add users to it right for that, the command is really simple. G password and the name of the user. Let's say demo one and the group. Uh, the group will be demo group, right? User added to it. And to check what are the groups that a user belong to, the command is group and the name of the user. It's uh, demo one. Okay, it's groups, sorry. Uh, groups demo one and it will show me the demo one and demo group this demo one is actually the primary group of the user and if you remember uh, if i do cat etc password and grip demo one it will show me the unique id and user id and the group id too this group id actually belongs to this group so here it will show you the uh, primary group ID of the user. Yeah, so apart from that, if we want to add a user uh, to a, uh, change the primary group of the user, the command is user mod because we are modifying the user level details. The flag is small g and name of the group. Let's add demo one. Uh, the primary group of demo one, uh, demo one is demo one, right? And for demo two is demo two. So let's uh, change the primary group of demo two to this newly group, new group we created. So let's give it the name of the group and the name of the user. And if I do a groups demo two, it will show me that the primary group is demo group, right? And now for the secondary groups, if we need to add uh, secondary, modify the secondary groups, the flag will be capital G and let's give it uh, uh let's add it to maybe some other group the demo one that we that got created and if i do a groups again it will be added right but let's say uh, we want to append uh, uh, if we yeah i'll show you one thing if i do a demo two here uh, and add it to add the user to demo to a secondary group and if i do groups it shows that it has been overridden right to keep both of those group we'll have to add a hyphen a flag it's basically happened. So if I do a groups, 
okay i think i wrote the wrong command it will be demo one and if i do a groups so bo both of them are there and to delete the group it's group delete right i'll not go into that that is basically simple uh i'll jump into the next important thing that is system wide environment so it basically says that let's say for every user when they log in you need to display some of the important information on their screen as they log in right like the last login time was this and that so for that uh, we can set the system wide environment uh, there are basically two files i'll show you uh, inside uh, etc uh, there is a file called environment that is actually used to set environment variables for all the users and there is a uh, folder called profile.d not cat it will be ls so inside here we have all the scripts these scripts will be run when a you when a user logs in right and they have some constants the file name should uh, end in sh and they should not have should not have any shebang in their scripts right i'll show you what they do actually uh, let's edit the environment and maybe add a environment file let's say maybe demo equals to uh, nolix okay sorry mm, nolix yeah and save it and let's add a script uh, to the profile.d uh, profile.d slash uh, let's give it login time dot sh this sh is really important and we do not need the shebang so let's say echo last login was and add it to dollar home uh, slash uh, dot last login so what it will basically do for every user the home value will be populated with the path of the of its home directory right so every time a user logs in it will create a dot last login file in their home directory and redirect and save this output there i'm still not done yet let's add the date to it uh, same thing dollar home dot last login okay i cannot see my okay date and let's say cat dollar home dot last login and yeah let's add some maybe decorations like star 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 and let's save it yeah so uh, if i do a profile dot d it, it has the dot sh and the all scripts are written so let's log in to an user uh, let's log in to maybe say demo one right so yeah see uh, the last login was the date and the exact script we written there have been executed when the user logged in and let's say <clears throat> if i do a env and as uh, if you remember the um, env we created was nolix right was nolix i don't remember i think demo it was yeah okay and grab demo yeah see the environment we mentioned in the environment file that is that has also been exported for all the users and it is not only demo one if i go to demo two okay it asks me for a password let's go to demo three the same thing and if i run the same command uh it shows me the same thing right but you may wonder it's actually happening for all of the users right what if we want to set it for only one of the users or only few users right for that we have something called dot bash profile dot bash login and dot profile they're actually present within the home directory of the uh, user right uh, so what happens you can write those exact same script in dot bash profile or dot bash login or dot profile so what it does it first checks dot bash profile then dot bash login then dot profile right if it finds any of the file then it executes it and does not go through the others so if it finds dot bash logging that means that dot bash profile is not present and it will not go through the dot profile right so if you write the same script uh, in these files it will be executed and only for that user for wh whom you have put this only for that user this will be presented so i'm not going to go through that that uh, that is really the same thing so let's go on, on to the next uh, topic so sudo command and sudo file right so what is a sudo command so basically sudo is a command which we use to execute command as any other user right let's say uh, we have a 
<clears throat> okay i'll i'll go into the hands on uh, one minute later i'll explain everything so we used to execute command as any other user right and i'll again go into the slide show mode so if we run any command as sudo it will ask for the password right of the current user so basically linux says that uh, let's suppose i am the user demo1 and i say sudo hyphen u and root and the command so i am saying that i want to run this command as root so linux will ask the password for the user demo uh, because what linux says that if you are demo then give the password and authenticate yourself prove that you are demo then i'll allow you to run the, uh, the command as root right that is the first step but second step even if you authenticate you will not always have the permission because there is a file called etc sudoers that actually describes these permissions if any users or groups are supposed are allowed to do anything the syntax is basically like this we first mention the group uh, or the user and uh, the host and like uh, if we want to set a rule uh, if we want to set a rule like this that if the host is this or the ip is this then evaluate this rule for that this is the uh, field if we set it all then no matter it will run this all and all are for groups and users the users and groups we can assume the identity to run the command and this all means we can run any of the command and no password means that as i said when you try to use sudo it will ask for the user's password right if you use the no password it will not ask for your password and one more thing you can never run the is been commands right only using the identity of root user you can only run the binaries that are present in asp so yeah with this knowledge let's uh, uh, go into it as i said we have a group let's uh, create another group and uh, let's say group add uh, sudoers right and add our um, users to it hyphen a um, demo1 to sudoers and demo2 to sudoers right if i do cat etc group sudoers have users demo1 and demo2 okay so that is done now let's view the etc sudoers file so this is the file but we should not edit it normally because this has a uh, syntax so we have an utility called vsudo that we are we should use to edit this file because otherwise there can it can have syntax errors and if we use vsudo it will point out the errors so let's uh, go into it and let's uh, add the for a user we can just write the user and let's uh, give all the uh, the host to be all and let's say that you it can use any users uh, assume the identity of any users or group and it can only execute the command bin system ctl right it can only execute this command while assuming the role of any other user right and let also let's also add the groups sudoers the group we created and the same thing for simplicity we we'll say this and let's say that it can uh, run the command bin ls and bin cat right so yeah uh, for multiple commands we will have to give uh, space separated with comma and if i save it it is saved right now if i let's switch to demo 1 right uh, i'll give me a second i'll do okay my bad cat sudoers sudoers so i'll uh, so demo 1 can run bin system ctl and since demo 1 is part of sudoers it can run bin ls and bin cat right so let's go to demo 1 and let's uh, change user Uh, to maybe let's say root right and let's try an ls hyphen a it will ask for the password of demo1 and if i enter the password yeah it can do ls right let's do cat dot local and okay it is a directory let's do bash rc right yeah it can do cat but let's uh, do mkdir demo right and that there it uh, shows us that demo1 is not allowed to user uh, to execute make dir as root because here we said that it has only permission for bin system ctl bin ls and bin cat now as you remember demo3 is also in sudoers but it does not have permission for bin system ctl 
So uh, let's switch to demo three and let's try to do sudo hyphen u root system CTL status SSH, right? It will ask for the password and demo three is not in the sudo words. The incident will be reported. Hmm. Okay, yeah, system CTL it cannot run because it is not in the uh, sudoers. Uh, it is uh, in the sudoers group and sudoers group do not have the system CTL. But if I do an ls here, ls hyphen a, and it asks for the password, and I think okay, yeah, I got it. I think yeah, if I do an ls hyphen a demo, I think I did not add it. G password hyphen a demo three uh, sudoers. Okay, I think now if I do an ls a okay, I think I'm missing something. Hmm. I think I'm missing something, but you got the idea, right? Uh, if it is in the group, it will be able to run these commands. And if it is not, it will not be able to run the command. One thing I'll still like to show you that if you do not like to, uh, Okay, yeah. If you do not like to go through the um, give the password, you can do no password like this and base uh, our space and then it will not ask for the password. So if I do demo one and say sudo hyphen u root system CTL status um, SSH. So yeah, it did not ask me for the password because it has already executed and without the password because we did not give the no password flag. Yes. and this uh, give me a second where did it go yeah this was all uh, i have also uh, added a manual page for that uh, for anyone who needs to go through the commands once yeah thank you so does anyone have any questions feel free to ask i think very well explained uh, the pan uh, you know it's very simple and nice. so thanks a lot uh, the pan Thank you. All right, anyone, if no one has the question, then uh, shall we end the meeting? Yeah, I guess we can. Thanks All a lot, right. everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone, for joining.